Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, HTM here, and guess what? It's that time again for PTS patch notes. Of course, this time we are going over the new Necrom chapter in update 38. This is going live on the test server this week, so I will have tons of videos testing out everything from, you know, new sets. Obviously, the Arcanist class is going to be a big focus uh, of videos and discussion this week. But also, I wanted to look at some of these combat changes. These are going to be very big for some of the other classes, such as Templar and Sorcerer, which we'll see in just a minute, plus a potential nerf for heavy attack builds that I want to discuss here as well. So let's dive right into the combat and abilities section. There are a few bug fixes listed here, but one of the main things I wanted to point out is in update 38, that is the new patch, melee abilities with a range of 5 meters have been increased to 7 meters. Now there is a developer comment on this we can look at. So they're reverting the changes to melee attack range from years past to get them back to where they were since many of the original problems that caused that pass to be needed originally have been resolved uh, with other changes over time. It's our hope that this help makes melee attack abilities less frustrating to use in mobile encounters uh, as well as giving some melee builds slightly more reaction time to incoming mechanics. Note this does not affect radius size of abilities only ranges. So basically this means things like spammable melee skills, uh, for example, surprise attack from the Nightblade class. A lot of the uh, weapon skills, do wield, two-hander, sword and shield, those will be moved up from the base range of 5 meters to 7 meters, which should make them easier to land. Uh, I like this change in theory. On paper it looks good, but obviously we'll have to see you know, how this feels on the uh, test server once it goes live. Next thing, let's jump down to buffs and debuffs and talk about the Empower buff. Now, this thing got buffed through the roof uh, over the last few patches. It's part of the Oaken Soul Ring and the Heavy Attack build. I'm not going to call it a meta, but definitely, you know, Heavy Attack builds are pretty strong currently. Uh, this did see a bit of a, a nerf. So what they did is they reduced the bonus to 70% down from 80%. Uh, so let's read the developer comment on this one. Since we started working on heavy attack build viability in the past year, we've seen a massive surge in their use, definitely true, uh, which is phenomenal for seeing more players being able to participate in endgame content at a more digestible pace. And while we're happy to see these builds being used, we're seeing these builds inch a little too close to some of the high-end builds with how much more simplified they are and in some rare cases outperforming a standard build. So they're cutting down on the damage bonus here slightly, uh, in hopes that when you have Empower with a bunch of other heavy attack bonus sets, the numbers are still nice and juicy, but not as close to a full-on light attack build. So I think this explains sort of the place that heavy attack builds are going to have an ESO as, as far as how the developers want it to line up with things. They want it to be viable for endgame content, you know, doing plenty of damage, but not as much damage as a light attack build with a more complicated rotation. So I do agree with that in theory. I think that makes sense. Uh, somebody, you know, who learns all the ins and outs of their class, sets up a more complicated light attack rotation, bar swapping. They should be re rewarded, I think, with a bit more damage. I will be doing some testing as soon as the uh, PTS gets up uh, as far as how much this is going to affect your heavy attack build. I don't think it's going to have much of an impact overall. This is a 10% nerf to empower, but remember, that's not the only buff to heavy attacks. We have... Things like the Weapons Expert CP Star. That's 20% bonus heavy attack damage. You have, of course, all the heavy attack sets in the game. With those bonuses, you can stack multiple heavy attack sets together. You have things like percent damage boosts, uh, class passives, things like that. I don't think it's going to make a huge, you know, noticeable difference. But again, we'll have to do some testing to see. Uh, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Moving on to the class updates now, and this is not the Arcanist, this is all of the other six classes, what's getting changed moving forward. So talking about Dragon Knights first, bit of a bug fix here on Inferno, and then Dark Talons. This morphs damage over time effect now will only apply if the target hit by the initial hit does not have a dot active, similar to Acid Spray. Okay, and then Elder Dragon, this passive no longer extends the range of melee attacks by two meters, as this is now, once again, the default, you know, standard range. This passive now increases your health recovery by 259 per Draconic ability slotted, rather than 2-5% to per ability. So that's potentially a ton of health recovery. Uh, you know, Dragon Knight's still one of the tankiest classes in the game due to their very strong passives. 
Let's jump down to Necromancer. Now, Gravelord, just one update here for the Flame Skull ability. They increased the bonus damage of the third cast for this ability to 50% up from 20%. So I don't use this skill a lot. Um, it's not that powerful damage-wise. Maybe this will make it more useful moving forward. I hope so. Moving on to Nightblades now, and actually some really nice buffs here. I don't think Nightblades uh, need a lot of buffing, but there's definitely some good stuff here. First of all, under uh, Assassination and the Deathstroke Ultimate, so this is both morphs, they increased the duration of the debuff to 8 seconds up from 6 seconds, and they did put a comment here as well. For the Masters of Assassination, the Nightblade class is a little bit further behind in single target damage, so they're increasing the uptime on this debuff. So if you're not sure what that is, that's basically, you know, the bread and butter damage uh, ultimate for Nightblades. It boosts your damage against a single target. I believe it's by 20% for six seconds. So two extra seconds of that buff is going to be really nice, especially with the Nightblades ultimate generation. It's already a low cost ultimate. You're going to be able to have some good uptime uh, on that buff. So that is exciting for Nightblades. Also, a lot of changes in the shadow skill line. First of all, Path of Darkness it's going to apply more consistently rather than having different behaviors and, and line of sight rules. Uh, fix an issue with Summon Shade and then Veiled Strike, the Concealed Weapon Morph. So the Magicka DPS skill. This morph now grants its damage bonus for 10 seconds if Major Expedition was active while it was cast rather than for 5 seconds when Major Expedition ends. Uh, the bonus damage still operates the same for leaving Sneak or Invisibility. So... Hopefully this means it's just more consistent overall. I like that it's now going to last for 10 seconds. Hopefully it should be easier to maintain that buff. That is a very powerful buff on the Nightblade. Moving down to Sorcerer, there was a lot of discussion about Sorcerers going into this patch. Uh, things they needed in terms of like buffs and debuffs. I think Xenomax is listening to some of that feedback, at least by what we're seeing here. So under Dark Magic, Dark Exchange, this ability and the Dark Conversion Morph now also grant Minor Berserk for 20 seconds while they restore resources. And then Dark Deal, the other morph, this now grants Minor Berserk and Minor Force for 10 seconds while it restores resources. Interesting update for that skill. Let's read the comment here. These abilities are meant to be the class's primary resource restore skills. And while they do just that just fine, they don't offer any other reason to run them, leaving them feel a bit behind when compared to other class resource skills like Restoring Focus, that's the Templar skill, or Bullnetch for the Warden. I agree with that. I, I mean, these skills do good for sustain, but they don't offer you anything else right now. So to sweeten the uh, dark deals, little little pun in there, uh, we've added some name buffs for the duration. Okay, nice. So you're going to get Minor Berserk on both morphs, and then Minor Berserk and Minor Force for dark deal, uh, giving freeing you up a little bit in terms of buffs and giving some more utility to these skills. That's a really nice change. Negate Magic, they fixed an issue with the Ultimate and its morphs where they could not dispel another version of themselves. So now any version of these Ultimates will actively dispel any version of the Ultimate they're placed on, even if they're sourced from enemies. So that's a good update. Under Daedric Summoning and Storm Atronach, the synergy from this Ultimate Charge Lightning now grants Major Berserk for 10 seconds, up from 8, and they increase the amount of targets. Uh, the synergy will be effective on, so up to 12 targets now, up from 6, that's very good. Go ahead and read the comment on that. Since we've been slowly improving access to Major Berserk buffs, uh, we wanted to make sure this source stands out in the pack as special and a reason to consider bringing a Sorcerer or two to group compositions. Yeah, so I think that's a nice buff, up to 12 targets, up from 6. Finally, the Volatile Familiar Pet. This morph's special active now only stuns on the second tick rather than the fourth and the final ticks to make the stun less volatile in nature and help reduce the passive feeling of the skill. It's also, they've also increased the chance of applying the charge status effect to 5% per tick, up from 1%. So, decent change there overall, I think. Sorcerer's looking good moving into the Necrom chapter. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below of those changes. And let's talk next about the Templar. Some big buffs for Templar in this patch. Let's check it out. Uh, starting with Focus Charge. This ability and its morphs now grant major protection for 4 seconds after reaching your target. And the Explosive Charge morph grants major duration for 10 seconds. Really, really powerful. Uh, let's read the comment here. After the adjustment to Templar's damage, 
We've seen them drop down in effectiveness in PvP situations rather than bloating out their damage. Again, we're trying to help enable them to stay in the fray longer and keep up the pressure by adding more defensive bonuses. Okay, so that does make sense. Uh, Major Protection is a fairly good buff in PvP especially, so I think that'll be effective for builds that are using that Gap Closer skill. Uh, Dawn's Wrath, let's look at Solar Flare next. This ability and its Immorphs now also grants Sun Sphere, so sort of a new buff here for 5 seconds after casting, which increases your damage done with class abilities by 5%. Solar Barrage, so that's the AoE damage morph. This morph also extends the duration of Sun Sphere to 20 seconds. That's basically the full cast, uh, the full duration of that skill. Really nice. I like this idea a lot. You know, the damage on you know, jabs and puncturing sweep did get nerfed pretty significantly. Templar damage does feel lower uh, if you're utilizing that as your main DPS skill. So putting some extra damage back into the class, this one's going to buff all class abilities, which is pretty cool. Though it's only a 5% buff, but uh, I think this is, is nice. Now moving right along to Restoring Lights, uh, Light Weaver passive, they fixed some issues where this, the uh, ultimate could apply to the caster rather than other allies. Okay, and then another big change here for Rune Focus, which is the uh, armor and defensive skill for Templar. This ability and its morphs now heals you for 2% of your max health every second they are active. So while moving, uh, rather than 4.5% max health where you're standing within the rune. So some more mobility here uh, overall, though the healing will be less while you're moving. The second part of this, though, is they increase the healing effect by 200% while you're standing in the rune. That's resulting in the 33% buff to overall healing. And then they fix an issue uh, where these abilities were not being properly considered restoring light. I didn't notice that. Um, so they may potentially get even more healing from restoring light passives. Yeah, I think this is a good change overall. Let's go ahead and read the comment here. So after the changes to these abilities to grant them healing, we've seen a slight improvement in Templar ability to defend their sanctified grounds, but we're noticing the class really suffers in the majority of content with mobility. Okay, I think that's true. Uh, so while the class is meant to feel empowered, while locked into an area, we're trying to help them feel less clung to that area by offering some passive healing in between and doubling down, tripling down in this case, when they decide to mark their fighting area. So... Tanklar, uh, Tanklars, uh, Templars are going to feel even tankier uh, in situations where they're able to stand still and stand their ground because you're going to get this big heal, 200% bonus, but also some, some extra healing while moving, which is pretty cool as well. So good changes overall for the Templar. I am pretty happy with those. And I can't wait to try out the uh, Solar Barrage 5% class damage. That's a pretty nice effect. Jump down to Wardens here. They got some changes as well. So Animal Companions, uh, Scorch just fix an issue where this could fail to hit larger monsters. Uh, and then a bit of a change here, maybe a nerf depending on how you look at it, to Arctic Blast. The stun from this morph now fires off after a two second delay rather than immediately. And recasting the ability before the delay will reset the delay timer. Uh, and then they fix an issue where the stun ignored line of sight rules. So yeah, definitely, I think, a nerf in terms of the usefulness of that stun. I know they've gone back and forth uh, with the duration. You know, when the stun happens, it's definitely been worse than this. Uh, what was it, like five ticks you got the stun? So maybe this is a nice middle ground. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Weapon changes, just a few small things here. Low slash uh, and its morphs now last up to 15 seconds, up from 12. Shield wall, they fixed an issue. Uh, with this ultimate skill, a fix for dual wield flurry, and then under the bow skill line, acid spray, they increase the damage per tick of the damage over time effect of this morph by 38%. So that's going to be nice for those sort of bow uh, dot builds. And then just a fix for uh, vampire stage four, and then Argonian, the resourcefulness passive. So quick summary, we did see some nice buffs to class like the Nightblade, Templar and the Sorcerer, I am looking forward to testing those out. If you are a melee build, if you use a lot of weapon skills or, you know, melee spammables, look for that increased uh, range. Seven meters now up to five meters. I think it will make a difference, hopefully, making it easier for you to target those skills and have them go off more consistently. 
Finally, let me know what you guys think of the Empower changes. I did talk about, I don't think it's going to be huge overall in context of how many buffs we have for heavy attack builds, but obviously with more testing, we will find out for sure. That's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think, as always, down in the comment section below. If you could do me a favor and crush that like button, it absolutely helps uh, YouTube know to share this video with others. And to get more updates for the Necrom chapter and the PTS this week, like I said, tons of videos are on the way. Make sure to hit that subscribe button with your notifications turned on so you don't miss anything. As always, I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there, and I will see you around in the next video.